We've got the 49ers and the Seahawks duking it out on Thursday night. Who do you think is going to win and why? It, uh, to me, this isn't even a close decision. Seattle's had their opportunity to c- take control of this division on multiple occasions, and they just fell short in multiple weeks, back-to-back games. I mean, however it is you want to analyze their situation. And San Francisco has taken the best or made the best of their situation. So you go and you look at it, 9-4, and 7-6, and six, record speaks for itself. But the 49ers have gone through something that the Seahawks are not, and that is a multitude of quarterback injuries. Trey Lance to start the season, Jimmy Garoppolo two, three weeks ago, and now Brock Purdy's sitting there, Mr. Irrelevant, third-string quarterback, and he's finding ways to score the football in ways that it looked like Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance weren't able to do at a consistent clip, is what I'm saying. Jimmy, again, I'm always going to be a Jimmy defender, but it just looks like the offense flows just a little bit better with Brock for whatever reason. And, you know, you look at the slate, San Francisco's on a six-game win streak. They beat the Rams, they beat the Chargers, the Cardinals, the Saints, the Dolphins, and the Buccaneers. And, you know, technically, if you were to look at it because of the way that the Chargers are sitting at this moment, the 49ers beat three playoff teams because the Chargers are looking in or in the bottom half of the bubble of the wild card, whichever you want to look at it. But the Dolphins were, of course, at the time, first place in the division or tied with Buffalo and Tampa's winning their division. I know that they're struggling, but again, the fact that they are still a division leader makes them a playoff team. So that's why I say what I say. That defense is just playing lights out in their last couple of games. Against the Bucks, they allowed seven points. Against the Dolphins, 17 points. The Saints, zero. The Cardinals, 10. The Chargers, 16. The Rams, 14. They have not allowed a single opponent within this win streak over 20 points or even to touch 20 points. The defense is lights out. They're firing on all cylinders. This is not going to be a close game, in my opinion. They have the requisite pieces to limit the offense of the Seahawks. They're, they have the pass rush. They have the coverage. They have the linebackers to go in and, and, and press the rush of Kenneth Walker. So it, this really just comes down to who do you have faith in more, San Fran's defense or Geno Smith? So I'm kind of just looking at this, and I'm like, well, I, I want to give the Seahawks credit. I mean, they've been playing solid football this season. They have combat all the doubters, all the naysayers. Geno Smith is coming, uh, you know, trying to, you know, create a, a, a campaign to get a uh, a, a vote for the uh, Comeback, player, comeback of player of the year. Comeback player of the year. I'm sitting here having a complete brain fart. And then Kenneth Walker is trying to prove everybody wrong that, you know, he wasn't going to be able to shoulder the load as probably one of the better backs to come out of this draft class. And, of course, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and that offense is looking to prove Russell Wilson wrong to say we were going to be able to do this without you. So I think that they are out to prove people wrong as opposed to the 49ers are just sitting here trying to say we're not letting this go. I got San Fran by 10 points here, and I'm just going to say again, I think with the league's best defense, with how Brock Purdy is playing with this offense and how it's humming, even though they don't have Debo, Ayuk is playing heavy. His usage will go up. George Kittle will receive more targets. And, of course, Christian McCaffrey, when healthy, has proven time and time again he is a top back in this league. Last week proved it. And against a Seattle defense that's been struggling the last couple of weeks, I would 100% say that he has probably a very big game going for 125 to almost 150. I got the San Francisco 49ers moving on to 10 and 4. Kev, I'm in full agreement with you on this one. And it mostly has to do with the fact that I just have so much faith in that 49ers defense based on what you just outlined. They've been phenomenal in this win streak. And granted, I do believe that Seattle will give that 49ers defense a little bit of a tougher challenge than what the Bucs were able to present last week. But I'm still at the mindset that that 49ers defense can maintain that Seattle offense led by Geno Smith to maybe 10 to 17 points the way that I see this game transpiring. And, you know, looking at this game just a little bit more specifically, I think there's actually some aspects that favor San Francisco, despite the fact that you have Brock Purdy as your third string quarterback and the, and their offense to a larger extent. When I look at Seattle last week, their defense gave up over 200 rushing yards on the ground to Carolina. And Carolina, granted, they're a sub-500 team, but they're still fighting for a divisional spot in the NFC South to get that top spot in that division. And I'll say this, Carolina did a really decent job running the ball effectively. And to me, it was one of the biggest deciders from that game against Seattle last week. And then you kick it to the 49ers. The 49ers have a great rushing attack. The 49ers consistently over the last, I'd say, four to five years have had a great ground game. Granted, there have been some injuries in that department over the last couple of years. But when you got Christian McCaffrey in that backfield, and he, he could be utilized for so many different purposes, running the football, being used in a screen game. He could run wheel routes. 
I'm of the mindset that Christian McCaffrey is said to have a big day against that Seattle defense. And then on top of that, if you look at Brock Purdy and how he played his first start last week against the Bucs, that's a pretty good start. And the Bucs don't really have that bad of a defense. They have a solid defense on that side of the ball. And I thought that Brock was able to move the ball up and down effectively against Tampa. And when I look at Seattle, Seattle's defense is shaky at best. And they gave up a bunch of points to Carolina last week. And there's a very good chance, knowing how solid that the 49ers offense has been just as far as effectiveness goes for the last couple of weeks, there's a good chance that the 49ers could put up somewhere around 20 to 27 points. These Thursday night games are a little bit tricky to get the offensive outcomes proper just because a lot of times these teams are coming in on three days rest at most. So you're not really going to see a high scoring game if you're really big into offensive output. But nonetheless, I think the way that Brock's been playing, he's playing confident. He's playing effective football by not turning the ball over. And he's been really consistent with completing his passes. You got Christian McCaffrey back there who I think is going to have a big day. Kev, like you said, they're not going to have Debo. I think he injured his ankle, had an MCL sprain on top of it. So he's going to be out for a little bit. But you still got George Kittle. You got Brandon Ayuk. You got Jawan Jennings. I mean, there's still decent targets for Brock to work with. And I still think that he's going to be effective to slice and dice that Seattle defense. The only way that I see Seattle being somewhat effective in this game is two reasons. If Geno Smith is able to be effective against that San Francisco defense, which I think is highly doubtful because I think that 49ers defense, they're playing with a little bit of an extra chip on their shoulder because they know that the offense could be mired in a little bit of incompetence because they have a third string quarterback. And maybe this is a game where Brock doesn't play lights out like he did against Tampa. So I think they're playing with a little bit more swagger than usual. And I think that they're really going to put the clamps down on Seattle's offense. And that's despite the fact that I think Seattle has a pretty solid offense. you got Geno Smith, Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. I mean, these guys can produce, especially when given opportunities and if they can win those one-on-one battles. But this is a game I don't see that happening. And then the other way that I could see Seattle potentially winning this game is if they really make this a dogfight. If Seattle's defense can slow down the 49ers' offense, maybe force a couple turnovers and convert those turnovers into points, maybe they can make this a game and make it really like an ugly type win when it's all said and done. I just don't see that in this one. I think that that 49ers defense is going to get after Geno Smith. I wouldn't be surprised if Geno Smith gets sat somewhere around three or four times in this game. I think Geno's probably going to throw an errant pass or two. So there's definitely some opportunities for the 49ers to get some turnovers. And I think if Brock is able to just be viable, like he was against Tampa, viable is kind of disrespectful. He was more than that. He was great as far as I saw it. If he can play at that same standard going against Seattle this weekend, or not this weekend, on Thursday, then I think they'll be fine. As far as I see it, I, I got the 49ers winning this one all day. Kevin, I'm pretty much going to be in the same ballpark as you. I think that the 49ers win this one fairly comfortably by about 7 to 10 points. If I had to put a score on it, I'm going to say that the 49ers win by the score of 24 to 14. I really think that the 49ers defense is going to be the pivotal force here. And I think they're able to force those turnovers, give Brock the ball with a nice field to work with. I think that they could take advantage of it. So overall, I think San Francisco gets this one pretty soundly. And as far as I see it, Kev, this win would essentially clinch the NFC West as far as I see it. Seattle had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to really take control of this division. They faltered over the last month by losing three out of their last four games. And I think this is another one of those situations where it's in their hands, but I think they're going to fall short just because they just don't have the pieces here to be able to go up against that 49ers defense. And that's no disrespect to Seattle. Seattle has great pieces to work with. It's just that 49ers defense is something else. That is a Super Bowl type of defense. And if they play like this, San Francisco could find their way not only to an NFC Championship game, they could screw around and potentially get to a Super Bowl. Th- that's how good this defense is, and it is not to be trifled with. So I think I pretty much sung my praises about the 49ers with this one. But overall, I got the 49ers winning this one pretty handily on Thursday.